Adventures here with the next video in my new series, um, the A to Z of my MSX collection. Um, and this time we're up to the letter H, and I'm spoilt for choice. So um, I've pretty much grabbed all of my H games here because they're all, you know, there's some pretty decent ones here. Um, and um, one that I haven't had for very long, and I didn't even know there was an MSX version of it, is actually Hang On. Um, now it's it's an alright game, it actually plays reasonably well, um, but it's nowhere near as good as, say, Hang On on the Sega Mask system. There you go, gets you a bit of an idea there. This is a few titles here, I'm not going to go to um, give you gameplay snippets of all of them. Um, and another one that I've actually done videos of uh, a couple of times lately, and that's Hyper Rady by Konami. It's actually quite a good game. Um, reminds me a lot of Enduro on the Atari 2600 with um, you know slightly better graphics. Sorry about that. And uh, obviously when I s it's summer over here, uh, but we seem to be getting a lot of rain at the moment. And I'm very happy to have a complete copy of that one. Um, and then of course you have the hyper sports games um, and they're basically games, they've got a different variety of games on each cartridges and there's three of them I've got hyper sports 2 and I always love these uh, Konami games although probably my most nostalgic favourite would be the um, track and field ones rather than these latter hyper sports ones but this one's uh, well, it's got skeet shooting, archery and weightlifting on it um, and then I have number three um, and I'm just trying to by the picture on the front I can't actually remember the exact games but obviously we've got some sorry about that so we've got some cycling some curling um, probably a long jump or triple jump a high jump and um, it even looks like a bit of hockey I don't know how many actual games on that, or whether that um, pitch is misleading on the front cover. I haven't actually played that one for ages, so. Um, and I said, I, I didn't choose it. Now, we're down to a top two now, and it was actually very difficult choosing these two. And one of them is a series that I am lucky to have all of the series. Um, I'm, I'm really torn on this one, but I'm, I'm going to let the other one just push these out because I actually really like these. So this is the Hydlide series, which started on the MSX. Uh, so I've got the first one here, and they're role-playing games. They're quite good, uh, you know, a little bit of candy text, but not too much. They're actually uh, quite reasonably playable. And then you have Hydlide 2, Shine of... Shrine, Shrine, Shine, Shrine of Darkness. They're quite nice covers, and the uh, the game gets, you know, the series gets better with each iteration. And, uh, and the best one of the lot, and this one they made, you know, the first two were for MSX, and this next one um, they jumped up to MSX2. And I actually had a loose copy of this for such a long period of time, but I couldn't get it to work because I didn't realise that it was dirty, and what it was because um, the the actual cartridge itself wasn't giving anything away um, and uh, so Hardlight 3 this is the space memories this is a really good game it's got excellent music but the only reason these have been these have pushed out the other one is that I actually haven't had these very long bar that loose cart I've actually had that loose cart for quite some time I'll just show you what the cart looks like So here we go. So that's I had this loose cart. This, I mean, the loose cart's actually my trade pile, um, and it's got a ROM chip visible, and it says active role-playing game. And I thought, oh, that's going to be full of candy text, and I wouldn't be able to play it. So for the longest time, and I had trouble getting it started um, when I first had it, probably because it was MSX2, um, and when I got it, I probably I'm not even sure I had my MSX2. Uh, when I got the first time, and then it got put to one side, and I didn't realise. And then later on, um, I got these, and this this one here, this Highlight Three, is in absolute spanking condition. It's it's like brand new. 
Um, and because they're role-playing games, I do love them, but I haven't ha really had the time to play them. So I've been playing Hydlide 1 a little bit when I get time and working my way through the series. Obviously, the uh, to accumulate to get up to this one, which is really nice. It you know it um, uses MSX2 capabilities to get a little better. But I'm not going to pick that one. Um, I'm going to pick something for the MSX1 that really harkens back to the uh, when I first got into the MSX, and I was so pleased that this game came out for the MSX at the time. Um, and it is pretty much identical to the Coleco version and it plays very very well and it is Hero so this is going to be one of our very first tape games we play um, some of the Activision titles are on cartridge I do have a couple of them on cartridge which I didn't know about back in the day I'm not sure whether Hero has a cartridge release I've never seen a copy of it but this is how all the Activision games came for the MSX on tape um, and funnily enough on the back if it will come into focus, they've actually got the Atari 2600 graphics. I use this generic packaging and then just chucked an MSX sticker on there. I think they did the same thing for the C64. So it is a tape, so we are going to have to load it up. I won't subject you to that, but um, I will load it up and we'll have a go of it. Um, and um, yeah, we can have a play of my favourite game out of my MSX collection starting with the letter H. Okay so here we go with Hero. Um, I've cheated a little bit and I've used my Mega Flash SD to load this rather than having to load it off tape. I own a copy and I'll have to check this. That's part of my rules. So Hero is a great little game, simple concept. You've got to make your way down into the cabins and rescue the trap miner. Do it as quickly as possible, you get more bonus. And the controls were developed for obviously the 2600. So you have one button fires, a little laser out of your eyes, and you've got to press down to drop the bombs. Now, I have played this a few times, so I do know these maps quite well. Actually saying I've played this a couple of times is probably... Uh, kind of, I don't know. You have to be careful if you can get stuck the, um, the wrong way. See, if I had a bomb down that right-hand cabin, I would have landed on that fella down there. So you get a bonus for each bomb you have left, and how fast you do it. Now, I'm getting flashing walls, which means lava. If you touch those, you're dead. Extra complication there is if you touch um, one of the lamps, it knocks the lights out, so you can't see what's going on. I haven't actually played it with this arcade stick before. Good choice of here. Yeah. Mm, can't remember. No, I need to go up now and put the lights out. You've got to be careful you're the right distance away as well. When you drop it, it's done. If you're lucky, you can take it other things. But, you know, on the um, MSX, it has that bit more colour. It and the M and the Coleco version are pretty much identical. There's no real distance between them at all. They didn't try to improve the um, sound or anything like that on the MSX. It's still just got the same simple sounds that it has on the Coleco. Oops! Ah, oh, dropped two bombs. Now if you do accidentally use all your bombs, you can shoot through What 
was there? Could I just walk up? No, I couldn't. Okay. You can shoot through the wall, so I might I accidentally press down um, and um, destroy one of those before. So it just, it's just going to hurt you on time. Now you start having sections where you have to start flying to the side. So this is being a power code stick. Did it again. Ah, oh, that's too close. There we go, there's my first life. Really careful with that. And again, it's so easy to just start losing all your lives. I want you to start these levels where you start traversing. You've got to take it very easy. And I wonder whether that dynamite is going to, yeah, it's going to come back to haunt me. So I can get a fair way in this game, so this is probably going to be one, one of your longer gameplays in this series. So even though I did no warm-up, I can still remember most of it. These ones, it's a bit easier. You've got a little platform to take you across. So we're up to level 10. Ooh, that's close. open all broadcast to do this so I'm hoping that this has worked and I don't have to do this twice oh, that's tight. oops ah, lost another life there So it really is a great fun game, and the Atari 2600 version as well of playing. One version I haven't actually played is the Atari, I'm not sure I've played the Atari 8-bit version. I'm just trying to think about that. But as with all Activision games, they're very consistent across the platforms. So we've got another extra life there. Whoa! Damn. see it is getting more complicated oops and there you go you only have to just touch the water There we go. So I can do much better than that. So um, a, a very good game in my MSX collection. One of my absolute favourites. Probably be definitely in my top ten. 
uh, if we did a top 10. Um, although there are so many good games for MSX, it's very hard to doing that sometimes. So I hope you're enjoying the series. Um, now I is going to be a bit more of a challenge. It'll be interesting how that one goes. But I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all my subscribers. And I'll see you next time.